Hala say they want the power. Jai. Them be promise us say we go get light and power. Nah, nah. Them hustle so they so they they can't get the power. Hmm. But now they know they do anything with the power. Sheer. Every day dollar just they get the higher power. Over naira. See them talk say make we off mind. But then go say my ego don't come. So my people make you lie down. Oh, yo, yo. My ego don't come. Oh, yo, yo. My people make we shout. Oh, yo, yo. They do even no one make person talk. Hmm. Them say that my egun, that man too they talk. He too they talk. Say my egun diary, he they hot like pepe. But every day then they tip money in buck. Come on. One man picking they the street they hawk. Still them talk say make we no talk. But thank God say my egun don't come. So my people make you love. Oh yeah yeah, my egun don't come. Oh yeah yeah, my people make you shout. Oh yeah yeah. Day off in mind. Aha. Now you mona don't hear you. all these bad bad politicians. Then we call themselves politicians. Where they think? Good evening to you. Good to you. Good morning to you from wherever you are watching from, and this is Mayegu Live. <laughs> Please share the broadcast. If you can hear me loud and clear, please let me know as we get uh, into this this evening. Thank you. I Share the broadcast, invite your friends, and then uh, let's do this. It's probably it's going to be a bit uh, uh, brief, but at least I mean at least it is an update. So share the broadcast, and we will start in a minute. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, for joining me from wherever you are watching from. Uh, this is Mayegu live. I choose to start uh, earlier than uh, normal, uh, which is uh, uh, nine o'clock. And also, I want to apologize to uh, everyone tonight that uh, Bashegu. Uh, will not be uh, coming on uh, tonight, even though he's pretty much ready, waiting uh, to come and uh, make his presentation today. Uh, but because of the, the delay, 
that we are currently experiencing in our fund uh, raiser. So I decided uh, to uh, hold on onto his um, appearance uh, till when we have all that uh, sorted and cleared, then uh, we will know that uh, we are making headway and we can continue with our plan. So that is why I keep that up. Uh, I mean, sorry, uh, you know, keep that uh, on the side for now. But while we were, you know, still pretty much uh, figuring out how we are going to uh, get on to show our solidarity to Oloye Sunday Igbo, uh, which uh, we believe uh, that is uh, our deal is politically motivated, and we are not 100% uh, blaming anyone other than uh, uh, the uh, supposed people in Yoruba land, starting with the state uh, governor, Sheyi Makinde, as well as uh, those who are supposed to be the political, I'm sorry, the Yoruba leaders, uh, watching as Oloye Sunday Igbo becomes the target of the uh you know of the state uh, security to the point that uh, they attempted to kill him and they killed two people in his house so we believe that uh, the ordeal of Oloye Sunday Igbo is more domesticated than foreign, as much as uh, they want us to uh, believe that the reason why they want him dead is because of his stance on the Fulani uh, terrorist. But uh, far from that, there are other factors also playing out, especially when you would expect uh, the Oyo State government to rally around uh, uh, Sunday Igbo when this issue of insecurity uh, started in Oyo states and it got to the stage where people are being killed people are being kidnapped and i mean the state governor himself confessed uh, to that rather than support Igbo, they unleashed what we can call cold war against him there are so many things until what happened again today Igbo has been in uh, illegal detention in Benin republic and we keep asking ourselves what are the yorubas doing or what are the Yorubas not doing? However, uh, today proved the point to so many of us again that we should not look too further when we are looking for those who are behind uh, the Oloye Sunday Igbo's travail. From what I have gathered, yeah, let's start with what happened there tonight, and then I'm going to take you a memory lane. Why we need to continue to uh, remind those who are going to continue to profit from this uh, bloodbath as well as uh, self destruction, because that's what I see it as we are self destructing. If Yorubas can be going after Yorubas simply because of uh, political power and then uh, all this worldly power that has not really benefited us as a people, except uh, the minority, uh, the minute few who are privileged to be in a good deal with Nigeria, sacrificing ourselves for whatever pecuniary gain it is coming, I mean, it's, it's going to give, we should continue to point that out. And we are not all stupid, we are not all foolish, and we can see the handwritings on the wall. The event that, uh, you know, uh, that happened in the early days of uh, 2021, Igbowo started getting attacked from the people who are supposed to be his own brothers and his own sisters. If you get to know the history, the political history of uh, your state, breaking it down, the political history of uh, your state, where Oloye Sunday Igbowo is also a very prominent uh, actor until he decided not to be, uh, you know, with uh, this uh, political class anymore, decided to side with the people who are the victims of their decisions, so to say. He decided to join and uh, team up with the people. And I think that's one of the things that made him lose his own immunity. In all your states, they have uh, different, uh, you know, different uh, people who are dangerous uh, criminals, powered and then, uh, you know, protected by the politicians. Depends on who is in power. Before now, Oloye Sunday Igbo, publicly, privately, and at every given opportunity, will tell you his relationship with the former governor of your state, uh, Ladoja. Ladoja, when Ladoja was governor for your state, among uh, the, politi uh, the political thugs he used was uh, our own uh, man, Oluye Sunday Igbo, who happened to be uh, the, uh, one of the chief security aides to, uh, uh, what do you call it, one of the security aides uh, to the governor at the time. Now, I purposely used uh, the uh, political thuggery in this uh, sentence because we all have our past. And right before our eyes, we know where Oluye Sunday Boy is coming from and how he lost 
is immunity because that is exactly what happened. The moment Oloye Sunday Bowo decided to side with the people, which is kind of profitless, he was never going to get paid for it. When he was on the side of those who are the rulers of your state, he was getting paid for it, like all those who came after him and those who are there now. Now, Oloye uh, Sunday Bowo decided to leave all of that and side with the people, which is pretty much like profitless or moneyless or penniless. And this made him lose his immunity from those political class. And that exposed him to all the things that happened afterward. Oloye Sunday Igbo's house was burnt down. Right there in the same Soka area, his first house. It was burnt down, not by Fulani, not by any other tribe they might want to picture up, you know, kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, ingrained in your, uh, in your brains. When Oloye Sunday Igbo's house got burnt in uh, January, I believe it was the end of January 2020. 21. Uh, it didn't take long for him to say, I knew those who burnt down my house. Because from his own intel, the people who came to burn down Igbo's house were no other people than the lawyer, I mean, the political, I mean, sorry, the, the, the lawyer political thug to the governor for your state. Is the demand called auxiliary? If you know the history of auxiliary, auxiliary happened to be. Uh, you know, what they do is this. That's one thing that's uh, kind of differentiated both from them in a little bit, right? Uh, they are like, uh, you see all these motor park uh, garages, NURTW, and the rest of that. This is where, these are the people who kind of control or your state violently, and politicians always kind of, you know, uh, back them. So, Auxiliary happened to be one of those uh, from that, uh, you know, kind of uh, world. Now, Auxiliary committed a crime at a time that he was accused of uh, killing people in one of their escapades in Ibadan. So he was sent to prison. Somehow, somehow, yeah, I don't know. Uh, somehow, somehow, he got freed. And I think it was uh, the APC, Egbekegbe, that freed him at the time, uh, under uh, the former late governor, Ajiribi. Now, I'll cut the long story short, this auxiliary guy, yeah, owes, according to people, he owes his uh, freedom right now to the current uh, governor of your state. So when Sheyi Makinde came in, this is where the whole thing became kind of, uh, should I say confusing or complicated? Sheyi Makinde, as the governor of your state, as the candidate of PDP at the time, had uh, Rashidi Ladoja, who happened to be, according to uh, Oloye Sunday, Rashidi Ladoja is uh, Senator Rashidi Ladoja, who will always be his boss. And Rashidi Ladoja is also kind of one of the godfathers of those who brought uh, Sheyi Makinde in. Now, I don't know where the kind of fistic of or this disagreement comes in that Sheyi Makinde and uh, Sunday Igbo, they are not in good time. I don't know. I wouldn't be able to understand that. However, why auxiliary lawyer to Sheyi Makinde will orchestrate the burning down of Sunday Igbo's house using this moment of this insecurity and all this stuff? Yeah? Using that to commit, you know, a kind of uh, self-attack on Igbo. This is fact, by the way. So, they burned down Igbo's house. His first house. We got the video. What is this? Ah, is it because Igbo went to Igbo went to defend uh, the Yoruba people? Is it because uh, Igbo is speaking up against uh, the yeah, Fulani invasion? Ah, it must be the Fulanis. Ah, they must be the one who burned down his house. And they said, no, they were not. It was in the Igbo's house was not burned down by Fulanis. It was burned down by the same people from the same Ibadan, the same Yorubas. And with that, that further strained their relationship between Sheyi Makinde and uh, Sunday Igbo. So on so many occasions, on so many occasions, right? That uh, Sunday Igbo and uh, the Yoruba nation team will say they want to go out uh, for a rally. And before you know it, the uh, security, the or your state police force 
or uh, the or your state up message we wait to record them uh the or your state uh, military i mean or your state uh, soldiers who are based in uh, or your state they will quickly be deployed to go and block the road and stop uh sunday Google, from advancing or moving anywhere on a peaceful rally so all of this were going on until the day they came to sunday Google's house july 2nd 2021 and when they got to sunday Google's house then that, that that midnight the i'm talking about the dss that came to kill him now they put on the hood right and then uh, those who brought them to sunday Google's house they were those from the same Ibadan. The people who believed that uh, kill him. And they were those who told the DSS that Sunday Bobo can turn to cats. It can turn to anything. It can disappear. Somebody was even somebody even made uh, a video where they had this phone call and they were talking about the reason why Bobo had to be killed. The person who was making that phone conversation was a Yoruba man from Ibadan. So, when they came, it was that everything moving, everything, if they meet, any, if they see anything moving in that house, it must be gone down. So they put on the hood. No one, they said they started screaming. Sunday, Bowo, come out, oh, come out now. If you don't come out, we are going to smoke you out. We are going to smoke you out. We are going to burn down this, uh, this building. People who came to arrest somebody, if you came to arrest somebody from government, that, oh, you have committed a crime, we need you in our office. Why would you go to their house and destroy their properties and destroy cars, destroy, you know, you, did you, do you remember the video of the attacks on Sunday Bowie's house? That wasn't an arrest. It was an assassination attempt. That happened right there in Ibadan or your state. Where she, Yimakinde, is the governor. And until that moment that they attempted to kill him and they killed two innocent people in his house, yeah? To this moment, they haven't told us what crime Igbo committed that prompted the DSS to come gun blazing to murder him. It wasn't about uh, the Fulani arts men, ladies and gentlemen. There's more. And that is why we have to continue to ask them that what exactly is their gain in destroying the Bobo, burning down his properties. And what, that's what I have been told. Though. So what happened today in Ibadan eh, is another shocker. So when Sheyi Makinde came in, Sheyi Makinde banned all this NURTW. All these agbiros, all these stout, everybody, he banned them. He said, no, they can no longer con continue to do that in your state. I happen to be one of those who actually praised him for that. But do you know what? He now created park managers. Park managers are supposed to be responsible government, uh, you know, kind of government-backed officials who are going to be collecting revenue at different parks. They are not going to be just thugs like they say, but guess what? It was just a rebranding for the same thuggery. What did Sheyi Makinde do? He appointed auxiliary as the head, the, the head of discipl disciplinary for the task for, I mean, for the garage managers in all your states. So that put auxiliary in the stead of uh, what used to be the chairman of NURTW or your state. They made him the task force uh, manager. And the story behind them since they started, you can, you can go on and on and on and on and on on that. But why are they hell-bent in destroying the Google? What exactly is at play here? So when they divert your attention and tell you that so, 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 so people are your enemies, so, 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 so people, you must suspect them. At the same time, I want you to look inward. This is Yoruba versus Yoruba. What is happening to Igbo is 80, more, if, even, if not more than 80% uh, Yoruba, Yoruba uh, fueled. Let's start looking at all of these things. They went to Soka today. They started shooting. They started shooting. Talk, so 
thugs, they were shooting, they were with their machete, they were everywhere, macheting people, and they went to Igbo's house. Since they locked Igbo up, and they managed to get him out of circulation, right? According to them. It seems that there are some signs that Sunday Igbo is about to come out. And to them, they cannot let that happen. Because you know one thing? When Sunday Igbo was everywhere, you all saw that, you all felt it. Even those who hated him, they had to respect him and say, wow, wow. Those who thought it was nothing, they were shocked. And some of them started asking questions like, I, I, I love the fact that uh, people, I love everything that is happening, but I wish it's not Igbo. At least we know Igbo's story. Those people who didn't give a damn before about the Yorubas Wahala, yeah, they started talking about it. And it's just the only problem they had was that uh, it should not be Igbo, it should be somebody else. How many of you still remember that? And that was when they didn't believe him. Now, he's been locked up illegally. They can feel it. That is like he's coming out soon. And I can tell you this. That yes, Igbo is coming out soon. So Igbo coming out is now going to be a double danger. And I will explain that to you. Because if not, any key, uh, any key, any key, any any Is that not what we ask them? Eh? Somebody screamed, SOS, they are killing us, so everybody, let's rise up, oh, let's come out, oh, let's defend ourselves, oh, let us come together, united, speak about these things. They went after him. Now, he decided to run for his life. He will, he will fight uh, and then uh, he will fight and run, leave to fight another day. They killed innocent people. He's not committed any crime. Now, he's locked up illegally. They are using every tool they have to keep him there, but they can now sense it. Like somehow, somehow, it's like people are rising up. Oh. And you know that if Igbo should come out now, I will tell you it's a double jeopardy. If Igbo should come out and continue his journey to Germany and he stays there in Germany, it is trouble for the political class. And it is a big trouble for 2023 election. I can bet my last penny on that. If Igbo is out, it's the same thing if Namdi Kanu is out. And you think they will have a very smooth 2023 election? It's not going to happen. It's going to, it's going to make their 2023 election more expensive. So if Igbo should come out now, eh? Here is the first one. If he goes to Germany, Back in Nigeria, eh, everything they have been working on behind the scene to keep it away, away, to keep the news of all this, uh, all this uh, insecurity in Yoruba land, to keep them at so minimum, at the barest minimum, so that they can be talking about their 2023, 2023. So, so far, so good. That is working. But suddenly... Some people are already raising money for Igbo. Some people are already doing a lot. In fact, they can tell that so many things people have been doing in the last seven months is about to yield result. By the time all of this whole thing comes together, before you know it, Igbo will be out. Where are they going to start from? When Igbo will start telling Yorubas? That didn't I tell you? Because you know what? Igbo is going to come out even stronger than he was. When he was just doing it, then like, hey, everybody come out, oh. everybody come out, oh. let us do this, oh. let us defend ourselves, oh. that some of you are laughing, some of you are mocking him, some of you are waiting for him to be, to be arrested, some of you are waiting for him to be killed. When he got arrested, some of you are still mocking, you are laughing, you are asking him to disappear, and the rest of that. But you know what's going to happen? When he comes out, when he, the party is over, and your leaders know that. It is not the Fulanese that keep it going in the Republic. It is the desperate Yoruba political class. And they are doing everything to keep it that way. So Igbo coming out. As uh, those who are already thugs, their only solution is, what can you do? What if Igbo comes back and go back to Nigeria? What are we going to do? Are we going to just... Uh, 
let him just go out like that because if he comes back, the way the people are going to embrace him, the way the people are going to welcome him worldwide, Igbo's name is going to be bigger than the names of all of your political leaders combined, all of your traditional rulers combined. He is going to shake everybody and they, they know it. You know what they are doing? Since Igbo has been away, since he has been away, yeah, they were surprised that people are still in his house and they are still maintaining his house despite all the destruction, all of the bloodbath in his house, right? They clean things up and they continue to maintain the place. Now, if Igbo should come out, is he going to be coming back to the palace again? No way. From what I have been told, their plan is to burn down the house. And they are not going to give up until they do that. They said Igbo will come back to Nigeria. He will come back and meet nothing. He will be co come back and become nada, nothing. That is the agenda. And that is not being done. That is not being done to us by the Fulanese. It's not being done to us by any other person, but our own brothers. Our own brothers. And say it loud and clear. People are pointing fingers at Sheyi Makinde. A lot has happened. And people have been quiet, watching, waiting. And he himself continued to pretend one person got killed today. And you ask yourself, why? For what? To prove what? Eh? Because election is coming. So some of you may not know what we are getting ourselves involved in. And I think we should begin to tell ourselves, right? Uh, in December 2021, we, we thought about doing something uh, on this issue of Oloye Sunday, Igbo. And so many people didn't feel comfortable about that. Okay? So many people don't feel comfortable about that. Uh, just talking about it alone makes them feel like, do you really know what you are getting yourself into? And on my Egun's diary, on my Egun's diary political, I, I try to simplify it for everyone so that you won't be in the dark of what we are getting ourselves involved in. So by law, yeah, the fact that we have uh, the audacity to go, uh, to go via legal means, hire best hands, get lawyers, get funding, you see, I told you, I said, if all of us in the diaspora, if we put to use our influence, just if we use just 10% of our influence over Nigeria, if we decide to use it, politicians in Nigeria, they are never going to remain the same. And then when I came out in December, I said, let's try something out. Some people didn't feel good about it. Then this January 2022, I was like, it is either we all remain same, complaining, lamenting, uh, analyzing, giving excuses, uh, you know, doing all of those stuff. Why don't we? Why don't we just start acting? And the moment my friends on Mayegun's diary political felt like, uh, of course, Mayegun, let's do something. That moment changed everything. It didn't just change everything because we want to do it, right? It also changed everything for those who are behind the travails of Foloye Sunday. It is more than Fulani arts men as they want you to believe, ladies and gentlemen. Those behind our trouble, they are not from any foreign distance they are actually our own brothers and sisters and once you understand this that's why i said something like you see being in the diaspora 